Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with the 34th week of WeeklyPokerHand.com, where today, again, I'm going to be going over a hand I played recently in a $25,000 buy-in event at Bellagio. The villain in this hand is someone that I don't really know, but from what I can tell, he seems to be the type of guy that will bet with his strong hands and then sort of fold them if you apply enough pressure. So we'll keep that in mind as we go throughout this hand. Uh, Pre-flop a queen nine suited. Obviously, the only play is to call and take a flop. You could also three bet if you wanted, um, but I think calling is going to be a good, a good standard play. So the flop comes nine six three, which is obviously good for queen nine. I check the sort of straightforward guy that tends to, you know, play his hand relatively straightforward. He bets, and I think right here, calling is pretty good. Um, if you raise here and your opponent calls or re-raises, your hand is pretty much trash, and anytime that's the case, you do not want to raise, because, you know, you want to keep your hand strong. You know, if, if I check raise here, my opponent folds, like, ace-queen or king-queen or ace-king, whatever, that doesn't really do me too much good, and he's never folding a hand better than my hand, and he's probably going to fold something like pocket eights. So right here I think calling is the only play. On the turn, we get the ten of hearts, which is obviously not a good card for my hand. Um, I check, and the tight, straightforward player bets 2,000 into the 3,600 pot. And at this point, I think it's pretty clear that my hand's no good. So the standard thing to do would be to just fold. However, Given that the blatantly obvious draw of 7-8 just got there, I think this is a pretty good spot to raise the turn and then bet the river pretty large for if my opponent calls. So right here, I think my plan is going to be to make it about 6,000 right here. And then if my opponent calls, I'd like to bet something like 13,000 on the river. And I think that's going to get your opponent off aces a lot of the time. And I'm not really a big fan of trying to get my opponent off a monster hand like aces, kings, queens, jacks, something like that. But this is a spot where you can easily represent a straight, and if your opponent believes what you tend to tell them, then you should probably try to represent it, as long as they don't think you're too crazy. And I, at this point at the table, I haven't really been doing anything out of line. So I think that's a pretty good play. So I do make it 6,000, and my opponent does fold. And so now you have to think, what would you do if you had something like jacks in your opponent's spot? And the answer is, you probably just have to fold. Um, th not not too many players are going to be check-raising the turn with a stone bluff, or even a hand like this. I mean, our hand's effectively a semi-bluff, but when we get called, we're in pretty bad shape. And, you know, I know we're in bad shape if we get called. Um, so I am, I am turning my hand into a bluff by raising, but if you're sitting there with something like pocket jacks, it's a really tricky spot on the turn, because you don't beat any value hands that are getting check-raised on the turn. The worst hand I'm going to be check-raising here for value is going to be something like 9-6. So my opponent has to figure out if I'm semi-bluffing, total bluffing. I'm probably not going to total bluff here that often because you want to have some equity when you get called. Or if I have one of the monster hands. And I think in this spot, I, mean, I either have 9-6, um, 9 6 is 3s, 10-9, or most likely 7-8. And, you know, this is a, it sort of also illustrates a way that you don't particularly want to play 7-8. Or, you know, you can play 7-8 this way as long as your opponents know you're capable of check-raising the turn as a bluff. Because right here, if I had 7-8 and I check-raise, my opponent's going to fold his aces or jacks or whatever he has, and I'm going to feel like an idiot because I missed out on a lot of value. So uh, make sure that you're not only check-raising the flop or the turn or any street, really, with only monster hands. It's going to make it very easy for your opponents to play against you. So if you guys have any questions or comments about this hand or any others, please feel free to let me know, and also send in hands of your own. I'd love to review some of them. This has been Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. Thanks for watching.